Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I got an answer to my conundrum from Croco in the comments, and the answer was to replace the Mark 1 pod uh, with a new one, basically get rid of the old one and put a new one on, and that seems to work. Uh, I had added it to our construction, but I took it off because I had not yet fixed the science, because we do need to put the right science in. And again, we can only put two science in at a time, so in order to do this, we're going to have to do two launches of the Dionysus one. Uh, but, uh, well, that is a little bit more expensive than one launch of the Mark 1-3 pod, but right now we might as well just go with what we've got. So, liquids and microgravity and visual tracking is what we have here. Let's pay attention to any special requirements. Space low, space low. Uh, three hours, four hours, and this requires one day. Um, so let's just make absolutely sure that we're good for one day. We are not. <laughs> um, but uh, if we extend the solar panels and turn this around... You know what? Forget the solar panels. Um, let's do the fuel cells. Let's do the fuel cells. We'll put the MLI layers on. This will only make it more expensive, I think. But uh, it'll guarantee our situation. This only requires one, but that's actually a problem. I don't know where to put it. Um, people aren't going to like that, right? <laughs> that's probably not going to meet with anybody's approval. Configure fuel cell. We've got fuel cell options now. I'll go Apollo, I guess. Maybe we'll have multiple engines, but that always gives us problems. I tilt these. Except for the mount makes it look ugly. Okay, maybe we'll try that. Apollo fuel cell. Just one, but we need the fuel. Um, I never configured these. Let's just do MMH and Mon3 for the service module part, even though this is all going to run on HTP, and we'll keep it that way. Mainly because otherwise we don't have enough space for the fuel cell stuff. We don't need as much in here. Let's say 80-40. Even that's probably way too much. Well, it's not that much more expensive. 400 extra. Before one fuel cell versus all those solar panels, at least it will keep it powered. Here it says liquid hydrogen nine days. Maybe that's right. We have enough delta V to like go to the moon. Not that I'd be safe with this thing, but we do. <laughs> We're severely overdoing the extra delta V in this thing, but that's mainly because I can't remove boosters. So... Still a problem? Yep, still a problem. Maybe I should human rate the smaller pad, but it might be a little bit too small at a maximum of 180 tons. Could work, but fairly tight and we're probably not going to be doing these missions much anymore. Okay, I think we are ready to build. I only can afford one for now. We'll probably have to do two. There was a suggestion that we should do a test launch. We are sort of running out of time on the program. We've got 10 months. So we'll think about it. But let's take a look at our crew training. I guess they don't lose proficiency. They might. Maybe I just haven't waited long enough. Okay, well, Nancy was waiting for the space plane, but I think this takes precedence since the space plane can't do the science. So she will train and be ready by November. The spacecraft will be re ready by November 22nd and she'll be ready by November 19th. So that's about right. Let's clear that stuff up. Okay, so the next thing we need to worry about is sending a prospective probe to Jupiter, the Jewel 1. This is completely unnecessary. Rolling out will cost a lot. I don't even know if we can afford rolling out in time. 
Well, we'll get started and see. Oh, we're reconditioning still. Yeah, we ran out of funds too. Astronauts are expensive. Sebastian, the scientist's upkeep is really high. Currently free. Well, we'll need somebody else doing Mercury stuff, so... Because we have to do two missions with it. Well, let's see. At what point is our budget balanced here? We reduce our building. Well, we can get some money like that. Okay, maybe we can roll out um, by the 22nd. It's a little bit late. Can we optimize that a little bit? 18th, and we're supposed to go at the, on the 16th. I guess that's acceptable. And we're like running out of money again. Hold on, I thought we had enough. Fine. Well, we're three days and six hours late. But Jupiter is pretty forgiving, so we'll go. We must see if these solar panels can manage it. Okay, longitude of ascending node means so that we have to wait a day. And it will be a nighttime launch. Let me get rid of that. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. Lost one, but we're going. Oh, it's on the core, that's best, that's fine. Oh, we've got some performance issue here. Loss of thrust. And that's made the boosters imbalanced. Great. Uh, but they both went off at the same time, which is interesting. I wonder what leads to that. There must be some... They're trying to save us somehow. Why are they suddenly being nice? Okay, separation and ignition. And fairings. Okay, and staging. And we lost one. Well, we have plenty of time. Delta V is going to be tight. I think asking for 10 minutes from this one is probably not advisable, though. Okay, good enough. Right, but now we're going to need more out of it. 7,223 is not a lot to get to Jupiter. So if it quits early, says 6,663, and we will go with that. On the bright side, we'll definitely get all the science if we have power at Jupiter, because passing through Jupiter SOI is not a four hour thing. Not at all. Okay, let's try it. Our plucky single engine. Okay, we are on escape and it looks like this engine will go the duration. And next, the uh, five engines that we have here and we really need to unlock, but actually this is a good test to see if they're balanced, huh? They were slightly imbalanced, but not so much that the RCS can't hold it. I just had to uh, deactivate the avionics in the VAB to check the power situation, and I keep forgetting to unlock it in the VAB in the saved craft file. Our Leosat seems to be getting a little bit weaker. Or at least it seems that way. We may need new comsats. 
their soul panels should be wearing out pretty badly by now. Okay, that seems pretty close. Uh, 120,000 kilometers is fine. We don't have any contract to get any closer. And it's polar. That's within the orbit of Io. That's good enough for now. Particular reason to go, really, except we're seeing if we can. This recharging. Probably at a mid-course adjustment we should make it point more directly at the sun, though. Yeah, we'll do it right now. Okay, so we have spun up. Even though we have tracking solar panels. Because once we get to Jupiter, we'll need all the solar panels pointed at the sun. And we'll just put a dummy maneuver there. We could bring it lower or something, but it actually probably doesn't cost that much. Oh yeah, well, fine, we'll do it. Okay, 63. So, we'll add that alarm. And it's gonna be a while. But it's on its way. Okay, next up is the Dionysus 1 mission. I'm going to roll that out. And there was a warning about maybe some heat problems with the Mark 1 pod. However, I do have a separate heat shield on it. So hopefully, and that's partly why I have the separate heat shield on it. So hopefully it'll be all right. But do we want to risk... Nancy, right away? Hmm. That's a tough one. We don't have a whole lot of money, though. <laughs> we, we, we can't build another one right now. So I think we are going to risk Nancy. Got time warp to morning, and we are going to launch her on the Dionysus 1. And hopefully... The main heat shield will take care of things. Alright, here we go. Uh, shoot, no EVA. There's no way to EVA out of it. Well, we've got lots of backup Delta V. The only ablator is on the adjustable heat shield. It looks like they removed the ablator from the Mark 1 pod itself. Well, that's an interesting choice. Um, Doubtless that's confusing people. Anyway, hopefully the adjustable heat shield will be good enough. It uh, has borne the brunt so far, but the margins have been very tight. So anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. We've basically used all the ablator on the adjustable heat shield, so we'll have to be careful. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, cutting two engines on the core for uh, thrust to weight mitigation. And booster is set. In this case, we don't have the vacuum Viking stage. I don't think these will last for very much longer. Maybe I should have just separated the boosters early instead of shutting two of these down just yet. But we have a lot of Delta V, so hopefully we'll be okay if these shut off early. Okay, that's enough G-forces, separation. Well, we can start doing something. Those are running. Yeah, this launcher was really designed around the Mark 1-3 pod ahead of time, so that's why we're so OP. After all, I don't think Essa would actually use a one-person pod at, that, at any point, so... If they were to make a crewed vehicle... Okay, we'll keep it there. And... separation. Start that one fuel cell. Well, toggle that one fuel cell. Alright. 
And over here, let's see if we can deorbit. Okay, so we are in orbit with Nancy, and we are running the experiments, and uh, food orbital mission one day is already checkmarked. I guess that's because we've already done a one day mission, so it's fine with that part. Okay, so actually we only need to take four hours. I appreciate that Nancy is doing two experiments at the same time, that must be difficult. I'm going to get into a more circular orbit. I just want the standard sort of one and a half hour orbit here. Okay. We need a like a smaller fuel cell for this thing. Well, hopefully we won't we are not going to be doing this too much, though. If we had a smaller fuel cell, we could have two and then a docking port there was what I was thinking. Okay, we got the liquids in microgravity. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, okay. I wasn't checking that, but that was because I was in time warp. Okay, we've got those two. We couldn't fit the other one in, otherwise I would have done that too. Well... Um... We'll wait a few more orbits, so that our entire descent will be in daylight. In good comms of Amalek. Attempting a fairly mild re-entry overall. I'll, I'll say 70 kilometers, since I've been warned about heating problems. Okay, well, arming the chute. Yep, actually checking this shoot information, that's fine. And separation. Please, adjustable heat shield, be good to us. Ablation is happening. Our service module has already exploded. We do have some pod overheating here. So that is aberrant. That is not how that's supposed to be when we have a heat shield there. And a slightly oversized heat shield too. But it's sort of cooling down. Seems like we need to oversize the heat shield a little bit more maybe. That's probably why they put a blader on it in the first place. Because bits of it poke out. I'm not going to be happy if you keep doing that. Well, it looks like my RCS system is being used a lot, but it's not doing that much. But it's using more than it used to, that's for sure. So that's an interesting point, too. I don't really want to use this pod again. <laughs> Seems dangerous. But they're making us use the pot again. I mean, the ablation on the heat shield is what it used to be. It's just that suddenly, because we have no ablator at all on the pod, um, we see enormous heat effects. Now, one reason I always put the extra heat shield on is that sometimes in the past, the ablator on the pod did not get calculated right. It was a glitch. It was a random glitch. It wasn't, like, consistent. So that's why I've never trusted the ablator on the pod thing. But we seem to need a little bit, maybe, just so that doesn't scare us. I mean, you know, as long as it survives, it's okay, but it's pretty darn close right there. Part of the reason is that we have, you know, the controller on, which is heavy, and so the ballistic coefficient, the heat shield area, and the versus the mass that we have is not as good as for a pure mercury capsule. And then we have the additional RCS system at the top too. Those are masses that the original did not have, causing us to have a more severe re-entry. 
One thing I might try to do is upgrade the avionics here. It's probably an old version. And we can reduce the amount that we have here. I don't want to entirely get rid of it, but um, we're not docking with this anymore. And that's what that was for. We're a bit far from Kuru. We're just off the coast of Brazil in the water. Here's the coast of Brazil. Didn't actually say return home though. <laughs> That's not actually a requirement of this contract. Okay, all good on that one. I really need the money back. Okay, well, she's gotta be out of reach for a while. 88.6% we got back. 4,700 funds. But we don't have quite enough to build another one, which we need. Um, and next up we have a Vesta launch. That's this Drez 1 that we have here. Let's call it Drez 2. Okay, so let's make some changes. It does seem like, even though I had the heat shield poking out just a little bit, we're going to have it poke out a little bit more. Like so. It's not ideal, and aerodynamically, but we have so much Delta V, we can deal with it. And we're gonna go large scale, AV let me see, what do we have tooled? There's a 3 ton one, that's the same diameter. We can just underutilize this tank more. Okay, so those are the mitigation features that we are going to use to help this one survive a little bit better. And we are going to change the science on it, wherever that is. We'll just carry the Earth Photography. It'll be lighter too. Okay. Okay, well, hopefully the changes are beneficial rather than harmful. Uh, Sebastian will be ready in two days, actually. Probably want to get that done sooner. But let's start this rollout. And we've passed the transfer point because it's taking too long because we don't have money. Okay. Uh, assign more people to build the rocket. I fired more staff here. We now only have 1,468 engineers. We could hire 200 more. I'm gonna put everybody here, I think. Yeah. Up uh, just with the sun setting there. Okay, I don't think I need that anymore. SAS on, throttle up. And ignition. And launch. Okay, pass the speed of sound. Okay, booster set. Still haven't fixed those. Stage set. And fairing set. Okay, separation and ignition. We have two of these RZ-20s. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Alright, so we are in orbit with 7,748 meters per second, which is lots for Vesta. Though still probably not enough to get into orbit around Vesta. We'll see. We'll check though. Okay, well, that's pretty close. Okay, ignition. Okay, separation. Oh, the avionics thing. But again, it helps us figure out if there's an uh, imbalance. There's a slight imbalance. Fortunately, this will be the last time we're launching this particular format of probes, so we won't keep having the booster problem and this locked avionics thing. I don't suppose we'll get an actual visible encounter right away without any further corrections. Yeah, I thought that was an unlike unlikely scenario. Okay, let us do some fixing. Okay, so actually without a correction we're re-encountering Earth and that's actually complicating things. We're not getting a close approach distance marker that is causing a problem. 
and it's because we're re-encountering Earth that we are not getting a closest approach distance marker. Um, it's prioritizing that and not showing me anything about Vesta. Okay, well, the only solution I have is to get out of Earth SOI and see if we can do something like that. Because I can't plot anything in here and see it getting closer to Vesta. It's still not showing me a close approach here. Got our ascending node right there, and it's really close. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this. Uh, well, we may or may not have a Vesta encounter. Or at least an opportunity for it. Let me see if Mike Jeb has something. Fine tune closest approach. Oh, it says five. Okay, well, it can do it. <laughs> I can't see an encounter, so I have to rely on Mike Jeb. So it's managed to do a mid course correction for us, and it's just 5.3. So we'll take that. Okay, Mech Jeb to the rescue. All right, so this is on its way. So, yeah, we'll try and finish the crude orbital program with the final launch to do that one experiment, the Earth photography experiment, and then we'll be moving on to maybe trying to send them to the moon. Uh, so, you'll see, we'll need a bigger rocket for that. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.